All right, as I was walking away from Project Dragonfly tonight, I thought it would be a good time to do a video update to the few people who've asked how the project is doing and maybe, hopefully, some people can chime in and give me some, uh, maybe some history on this particular machine if you happen to know it or if you see some things I'm doing that are questionable, you want to give me some constructive criticism, by all means fire away. For those that don't know what they're looking at here, this is a 2012-ish, 2013-ish Buckeye Dragonfly quad. One of the last ones they made, as far as I know, this particular one is, as you can see, um, camo hydro dipped. All the structures hydro dipped in camo, which it was the only one made like that. I think they were uh, marketing it to the outdoorsman at the time. It's powered by a 30-ish horsepower Generac 992, uh, GT 990 I think is the, the model. Fairly reliable engine meant to run 3600 RPMs all day, every day under full load. So this application uh, Last, supposed to last a really long time. Not very, uh, not very powerful though. So we'll maybe address that later. Holds five gallons of fuel. It's qualified as an ultralight in regards to weight. Left the factory with a two blade wooden Tennessee prop. Of course, that's not gonna happen. I've got a few props back there and we're gonna try um, try quite a few props to see what we get the best thrust out of but that's definitely uh, one of the last things i'll do with it uh, one of the first things you might notice i've done is the wheels definitely did not like the wheels that were on it the um, azusa light plastic rim they, they just weren't very attractive at all on the rear you see this is a typical uh, tundra tires what everybody calls them it's a hagar rim the carlisle tire um, on, I didn't really like the look of those on the front. It looked too much like a beach buggy, which um, I, don't, I didn't care for it much. So those are actually um, uh, mini bike wheels on the front. It, it looks pretty good. Of course, it's on ramps right now. Um, but as far as uh, the uh, weight and balance, uh, we may end up with the same, the Tundra tires that are on the rear may end up with a pair of those on the front as well. To help, uh, to help out on the weight and balance. Again, uh, that'll get addressed down the line. Not something I'm working on right now. What I have done pretty recently, the steering bars have been extended by seven inches. <laughs> Aluminum was turned down, um, slid in, riveted, and covered with a, um, this is a cloth heat shrink that I got from McMaster Car started out about two inches and shrunk down. It is abrasion resistant, um, which I think is great, but what I do see happening is uh, it's probably gonna end up pretty dirty because it's uh, probably gonna, any type of dirt or mud on your shoes probably gonna end up all up in it. What really started me working on this thing was the lack of instrumentation. And This is what I settled on after doing a little bit of research. None of it's powered on right now, but this is the uh, Gale Banks Engineering I-Dash. And each, um, each uh, gauge here can display quite a bit of information. Uh, the bottom gauge here, this is the PLX uh, air fuel ratio monitor, uh, live monitor which I thought would be neat to know. Not necessary, but most of the information is gonna come from these guys right here. Uh, on the RAM, of course, is going to be an iPad running for flight, so nav and altitude and descent rates and uh, all the nav information is gonna come from there. The, the bank stuff was, was primarily for engine data. This thing came from the factory with simply a uh, tachometer no oil light, uh, no temperature, uh, nothing, nothing, just a tachometer. 
So, um, wasn't real comfortable with only flying with a tachometer and not knowing absolutely anything else about what the engine is doing. So here we are with the Banks iDash. iDash is just a networked, um, networked head, if you will. And the rest of it is right here. It runs on a bus. Think of it like a CAN bus. They call it Banks bus. First module right there is the thermocouple module. It's going to bring in four channels of temperature. Those four are going to be, uh, it's a two cylinder engine. So we're going to have two EGRs and two uh, CHT temps coming in. So we'll know, um, know both of those cylinders. Yes, it's overkill, but what the heck, it was a four channel module. The other module is uh, four analog channels and a uh, frequency channel. Four analogs are going to give me uh, incoming air temp into the engine, oil temperature, oil pressure, and then the last channel is going to be the um, air fuel ratio from, from the PLX unit. That guy shows live. And then, of course, there's an O2 sensor that uh, the PLX unit uses. So from the reason to bring in the uh, PLX AFR into the Banks system, even though we have live display from the PLX on a uh, air fuel ratio, is the Banks system does logging. So we're thinking that um, with that information coming into the Banks, it may could get some more, um, some more accurate calculations in regards to what the engine's doing if it knows what the, uh, what the mixture's doing. Again, this is a twin cylinder Generac GT990, 992 cc's if I'm not mistaken. This is the OEM version. That's our CHT on the spark plug. Um, grab an EGR right there. Those are Banks uh, temperature probes. Banks. Um, temperature sensor and the bank's oil pressure sensor right there. Same thing on the other side, CHT, EGT. And a custom header exhaust job, which doesn't look too shabby. She holds five gallons of gasoline for the moment. I think uh, that's fine, keeps it legal. And I personally don't see much reason to carry any more because I understand that's about four hours of flying and I've never flown that long. So I think that's perfectly fine. Did add the headlight. Uh, works pretty well. I'm still uncertain on the charging system on this particular engine. I uh, haven't seen any pieces, parts um, of a charging system unless they're internal to the engine. So if anyone happens to know the answer, to that, would love to hear it. Um, of course, it doesn't have a wing on it right now. That's something else that's um, yet to be determined what we're gonna do wing-wise. This is the Micro Avionics MM005 uh, intercom module. Yes, it's overkill, but I really love um, the flexibility that it gives with, um, with the aux ends, uh, the recording out for GoPro. And I'll use, uh, I'll use all the functionality with the exception of the passenger, uh, passenger headset. But that'll interface with the, um, with the iPad that you don't see right there to get uh, traffic terrain warnings. Um, you know, your typical floor for flight audio. Would like to put some some form of a bag right about here, whether it's a motorcycle tank bag, most likely. Um, and I've got got some power already run to um, to charge whatever goes in there. But I, I think that's a good spot. It's it's unused. That's where that's where the control pod is on the power chute units and pretty much every other 
powered parachute and there's actually nothing going on right there in this on this machine so I kind of like to make use of that space between my legs and um, do some storage or charging or, or something right there so at the moment I'm thinking a motorcycle tank bag like a, a SW Motec or uh, possibly a GV quick lock kind of kind of thing Steering rigging has been redone per uh, Daryl Mazeline's suggestion, and I absolutely agree with it. Of course, you can't get a good idea without the lines actually there, but we're going to start at the wing. We're going to hit that pulley right there. We're going to grab that pulley, go to the steering bar, and then terminate at the line lock. Uh, the geometry of it makes more sense and um, that was part of the, the steering bar extension also is to get a little, little bit more line pull to um, help the steering. So in a nutshell, that's it. It uh, definitely feels like it's been more work than what I just described. Uh, the instrumentation has been a little bit of a, a trial and error working with banks, um, the frequency module didn't want to calculate the RPM correctly. This engine has uh, two mags, and so we have some uh, calculations to do in the banks module itself to actually display the correct RPM, and that was quite the challenge. Uh, we had some defective uh, items with the banks module, so a lot of shipping back and forth and tech phone calls back and forth, and just burned up a, a lot of time doing that. But um, she's really close, I'm thinking, maybe a week away from getting all this buttoned up. Assuming we don't run into any major programming issues with the banks that just, you know, requires, it, it requires a bunch of time to deal with. But uh, from a wiring buttoning up standpoint, probably about a week away from being able to bring it and, you know, a couple props, a couple wings out to the field and um, getting it in the air. I'm definitely not in a hurry to do that but uh, realistically not that much more time left uh, mounting the plx module getting the wires you know tidied up terminated and um and that's about it hopefully the next thing i'm doing to it uh, video wise is we'll start we'll start looking at numbers looking at thrust numbers and uh, different wings and seeing how to make this machine perform the best. The whole purpose of this machine was to, um, to fly solo and, you know, have a little bit of fun, a little, uh, different, uh, different type of flying from the, uh, the two seater Airwolf. But, um, if anybody has any, uh, if anybody knows, you know, does the history on this particular machine, please, please speak up. I'd love to know more about its origin, uh, and if, uh, if anybody sees anything that they want to throw a comment on as far as something I could do differently or better. Um, as far as the instrumentation, most people ask why. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It was, it was overkill. I agree. It's a lot of information on a really simple engine. But it, as everything, it started out small and ended up uh, really complicated. So anyhow... Um, that's it for where we where we stand currently with the dragonfly hopefully uh hopefully we'll have it out in the field in the air in uh, in a week or two peace out